Happy New Year! Uh, it's 2023 and I am here with my dear friend Melissa Townsend from All About You Real Estate. And Melissa, you and I have been working together, gosh, how many? It's about six years. About six years, mm -hmm. yep, yep. And um, absolutely love working with you because you always have the nicest clients. We were just kind of talking about um, how some people aren't always really nice. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell me, um, I, I know you're with um, All About You Real Estate, and how long have you been in the business? I obtained my license in December 2016. Okay. And I've stayed, became part of the It's All About You Real Estate brokerage, and fully believe in the name, mm -hmm. that it's not just a name or a tagline, that it's really a culture that's been embraced, and um, I want my customers to feel that they're getting a high level of attention and they do and I, yeah. I know I know from experience not only do you do it with your clients but you expect it from me too <laughs> so I but, do no, no. but you are you but are. you deliver that well, it's not you. we never have any conversations no. it's just seamless yeah and that is so important to us that our entire team um, operates at a really high level yep. and is very considerate of the customer's needs and mm -hmm. communicates well, well and is and is when needed very direct mm -hmm. sometimes <laughs> so. so yeah sometimes we have to yeah um, say things that we need to say and, and yeah. I think that you know some of the conversations you and I've had in the past um, that, that come to mind for me is Thanks for telling me, even though it's bad news. Yeah. You know, thanks for giving me the news because some people may lead you on a little bit, and mm -hmm. not realize that that client may or may not have difficulties. And Exactly. And I think a lot of what we do in the industry on both ends is managing expectations. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we need to understand the customer's goals. If they're not obtainable in that moment, mm -hmm. then we help them come up with a plan so that they can reach future, them yeah. in the future. Yep. And they can work towards that and it stays a positive experience. And mm -hmm. often we'll start with a customer sometimes a couple of years out from yeah. when they actually proceed mm -hmm. and, and actually secure the home. Well, and, I know and that goal. every time that, you know, we don't have many clients that don't fit the bill right off the bat, mm -hmm. but those few that we've had, that we've had to work a little bit mm -hmm. harder to get them into that buying position. Yeah. You, know, you always, you always say that to me. You always go, okay, is there a plan to get them into home ownership? You know, you, you don't just say, oh, and there are a lot of agents that will go, okay, well, thanks for trying, you know, and move on. Right. So, um, and so I appreciate that too, because I think, that's really what sets us apart is I you know agree. it is all about long-term relationships mm -hmm. and that's what i love about our business it is not a short-term short you know one-time situation and absolutely mm -hmm. not and, and mm -hmm. customers come back and mine will come back not just for real estate needs mm -hmm. but they have questions about the community they need yep. a referral for something involving a dog or a horse yep. And mm -hmm. I want to stay um, a value to them yeah. and help them. And, and I also, I'm invested in them through the real estate process of, yep. of reaching their goals. And you do develop friendships mm -hmm. and uh, I maintain those relationships. And I know too, just a lot of your, your um, mutual customers with, with me have been referrals, you know, mm -hmm. from family members that you've done business with yeah. or the client that is getting ready to sell their current house that they bought from you and now they're going into a, you know, they're upgrading or whatever. Yeah. So I, I do believe it is a service and a true relationship experience mm -hmm. when, you know, when, when in our business. And if it's, if you don't do that, then, you know, you, you're not long term. So I think that attributes a lot of yeah. your success because I know, um, personally on a personal level how hands-on you are with your folks and, and they love you you know they well and they love you too oh. I never have hesitation like when I send somebody your way I know it's gonna be a home run and we do give you know we have a referral list we yep. need to we yep. need to let the customer pick but I know that most of the time they're calling you first and um, and then and they're not gonna call anyone else oh, it's just kind yeah. of the way it goes in um, and because your investment in them comes mm -hmm. across immediately from that Thank initial you. phone call. Yeah. And I know that that's what's going to happen. 
and they just rave about you <laughs> and your entire team. And it's in, I think like a big part of what we do is managing. I mean, yes, we're looking for homes. We're trying to sell yeah. homes and such, and we're managing the contracts, but we're also through that process managing stress levels. Yep. And trying to make it as seamless as possible for the we buyer never or want, the seller. Yeah, we and never want them to sweat. We no. want all the back room stuff. To stay, stay in the back room. Stay, I mean, that's what we get paid for. Exactly. You know? so, so, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, what did you do before you got into real estate? What got you into real estate? So, I previously worked as the City of Ocala's Cultural Arts Manager when I came back to Ocala. I worked... Um, I worked for the city in the recreation parks department and there were a lot of revitalization strategies happening at that time. Right. I came home in, um, in late 2009 and started to work for the city in 2010. That's and we came back to Ocala the same the time. Same time. Mm -hmm. So another thing in common. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and it really was um, an opportunity for me to blend a lot of my skill sets mm -hmm. and um, and kind of focus them all and apply them to one goal. Right. Um, I have a, a lot of project management experience, contract management experience. Um, For and, that, that, yeah. that I, now I get you. <laughs> yeah. I, now I know how, because you are very organized. And, yeah, and, and I think you have to be in our our industry. Mm -hmm. I'm also I have an arts background, mm -hmm. um, so I can be more creative. I tend to be a vision person, and I think that helps when yeah. I'm looking at a property to place it in the marketplace yep. and how am I going to present it. And also when working with buyers and seeing, um, you know, a lot of our resale inventory needs a little help. Mm -hmm. It needs a little mm -hmm. uplifting, right? And being able to see the possibilities and um, and and find solutions for mm -hmm. certain ch challenges. Um, so, and I love marketing. I've always loved marketing. So I think all of that works really well for real estate. But when I came home uh, to Ocala in 2009 and started down this venture with the city, um, to be honest, I needed to supplement my income. Um, yeah, of course. So yeah. my mom and I did some investment properties. Oh. And um, my broker at the time, which was good because with, that was a good time to buy. It but... was a great time to buy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I still own this property, yeah. and they're long-term holds. Yeah. But if I sold them right now, I'd make a, a good uh, amount of money. Yep. Yep. Um, but um, I met my broker through coming home and buying my my house, and then as things progressed with the city of Ocala, I was like, I really want to do this. I want to help the city grow right. and become more vibrant and develop this arts program. But I was like, I can't quite do it for that paycheck. Right. <laughs> and so I, we bought some uh, residential investment properties yep. to supplement my income. So what so. were, what was some of, what was Ocala, what were you doing with the, um, with the city? What, what was something that we know of now in Ocala that you were involved with as far as? So a couple of the projects at that time, um, the first Friday Art Walk was actually started by some individuals okay. and, you know, citizens. Right. And they had gotten together. Um, Michael Bray was the mm -hmm. first person who initiated it. And then two friends of mine who are artists, when he left the community, they paired up and took it over. Um, but it had grown a lot. It was a little bit difficult to manage because everybody wasn't on the same page. The, right. Um, storefront owners and restaurant owners downtown kind of had some different goals than the artists did and then the community was looking for certain things so it ended up being taken over by the city of Ocala and initially the city was just a, a silent partner okay and then we took a leading role but but I formed a committee um, that we had different representatives from the business owners from the um, different arts organizations and everybody came together to help with the process and we okay. had volunteers. So that was a program that we um, helped foster along. Okay. And then once we got that really rolling, um, one of the big discussions was why is the Ocala Art Festival, which is run by Fine Arts for Ocala, out at the McPherson Complex. Uh -huh. It needs to come back downtown. Uh -huh. So I helped partner up with them okay. and understand their needs and work through the logistics of bringing it downtown, which is a huge undertaking. Yeah. And we had to have a lot of buy-in from the downtown merchants, 
and all the stakeholders yeah, yeah. Right, because right. the streets are closed for uh, three days right, and right. it's a big deal and it can mm -hmm. it it is an economic driver but it needs to be done properly right, right. otherwise it can really negatively impact, impact their yeah their business too yeah so so we had that project um, the old community center at Tuscawilla Park. Yeah. Uh, we partnered with the Ocala Symphony Orchestra to repurpose oh, that. Okay. Is, now is that so the that's one? the Riley Arts Center. What, I, which, yeah. yeah, I just, um, in fact, I'm going to see a Tom Petty. Um, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. But I just went, what did I do there? Oh, I was there for uh, Swan Lake. I took mm -hmm. my granddaughters to it. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful what they've done there. It's a fabulous space. Yeah. And they've grown. They have yes. a black box theater I know. now. And what and is that? It's it's a smaller, more intimate setting with without... Um, it's kind of in the round. Right, the I saw round. it. So is it for concerts too, though? Or? Uh, no, more for theater the and theater. smaller okay. productions. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. yeah, they so. really did a nice job there. I yes. was just there in December. Yeah, yeah. very, very nice. So, so, so you that's can kind their, of see your mark in little places. A little bit. It's fun. Um, it's fun to see it, everything thriving. Mm -hmm. um, we also did the outdoor sculpture competition oh, at Tuscola wow. Park. Okay. I've written a grant for that and got stakeholders behind us okay. and initiated that. It was a lot of fun in the role in my role at that time. I was doing a lot of research, going to mm -hmm. other communities, see what they were doing, what was working for them, and then coming back to Ocala and talking with community members and stakeholders mm -hmm. to see like could we adapt different programs to work for us mm -hmm. and uh, and make a big impact on everybody's investment? Right. Um, so the sculpture competition at the park brings in that uh, 10 outdoor sculptures for, um, they're there for about 18 months. Yeah, is that the one and that's right across the street from the, the park itself? It's so that's the Tuscola Art Park. Okay. The sculptures go now from the art park all the I, way around yeah, the main pond, yeah, yeah. and it's a it's a walk. Yeah. Um, right before I left my position at the city, we had finished building the Tuscola Art Park. Okay. So we did that, and then also um, developed the art incubator at the train station, the Magnolia Art Exchange. Yeah. So okay. So we were we were really trying to. Uh, leverage our art community mm -hmm. and um, and bring everybody together and fill some of their needs yeah. at the same time of taking advantage of unoccupied and unused spaces. Mm -hmm. well, the, uh, the park, art is park great. Yeah, it it's, was it's great. It was a kind of a just a junky field. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's so the one now that, it's beautiful. I know, and, and so I was going to say I really appreciate you doing all those things because yeah. when my granddaughters come from Tampa. And they're five and seven. You know, it gives it gives me so much to do with them. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one that has the dinosaurs. And is it kind of like a? Um, um, they have a. I, right now they have a kind of a. I think it was a dinosaur. I right? think there's there, there was a them. sculpture over yeah, there. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure if it's yeah. still there, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's beautiful there. Yeah. So I'm I'm proud to see that we did a lot of murals and everything is thriving and evolving. Mm -hmm. So they have a whole new team now. Um, I had gotten to a point where I had felt that I had contributed and made an impact and um, was, you know, ready to kind of step aside. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my broker, the gentleman who became my broker, um, when I got my real estate license, he uh, had a boutique brokerage. It's all about you real estate. Yep. And I had used him to help me my, with my, my purchase of my home. And then also my investment properties and I knew because we had become friendly mm -hmm. and he was a supporter of the art programs yep. and was he would walk in my office and bring me materials uh -huh. from places he had visited and said hey check this out you might you know yeah. really take something away from it that you could use here in Ocala cool. and um, and I just knew we were on the same page about so many things so professionally yeah, and also personally, and it was um, really wonderful to work with him. Yeah, so. yeah, oh, good, good, yeah. good. Now, I I know um, just from our, our deals together, I mean, you do you specialize with a certain clientele? Uh, so I think because of our knowledge of the construction industry, my dad was a general contractor, right. and I've renovated four or five older homes 
and um, I guess five yeah. now. And um, in, in Rich has many investment properties downtown as well um, and has renovated those. And we both have an eye for the arts and for architecture. And so the brokerage for quite some time has had a reputation for handling kind of unique specialty properties right. and being able to work through the different nuances mm -hmm. that like a historic home comes with yeah. because insurance and it's, it's, it's just a different, it's a different animal. It's a yeah. different animal. Um, and some of that is strictly, you know, you do need to have some knowledge beyond just basic mm -hmm. real estate yep. and, and a little more construction knowledge and how to get things uh, corrected if they need to be, you know, for binding insurance and such. And I and I definitely know that you you know yeah. your business and that side of it because we've done a lot of deals. <laughs> we with have escrow holdbacks. Yeah, <laughs> and and actually, you were probably yeah. one of the first that I did that when I did. came to Prime Lending, and um, it was it was it, it's amazing and it's always such a treat when you're dealing with someone who knows that side of the business. I mean, I think I remember the first loan that we did that needed a escrow hold back for the roof. And I mean, the person was the roofer, you knew the roofer, you knew what yeah. you took paperwork to them, you, you had them sign what they needed to sign, they they worked it out that we got it done so quickly. And it was just like, trust me, there are others that are kind of nightmare experiences because they don't. In fact, in fact, I called you yeah. for your advice on one recently mm -hmm. and what you told me to do worked perfectly. <laughs> it really is all about relationships mm -hmm. at the end of the day and yeah. communicating, yeah. which I think is why we work so well yes. together. Yeah. So we're totally on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and we I do have good relationships with the many tradespeople and mm -hmm. from roofers to tilemen to yeah. Um, you know, wood floor mm -hmm. installers and refinishers and in knowing when something's going to fit into a contract timeline and when it might not. And then having a resource like, mm -hmm. you know, you are just so fabulous at, mm -hmm. at knowing like, OK, what can we do within the loan guidelines? What's acceptable and what's not? And could yep. we do an escrow hold back for this and get it done after closing? Yep. Um, but having like that good team around yeah. you and also on the insurance side yeah. it's just so important it in our industry it, it is you've got and to have um it, 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 it does it takes a village you know it, it, yes and exactly it, and whether it's your title companies and your mm -hmm. you know, your anyone that's involved in the transaction if there's a you know if there's a a spoke in the wheel that's not isn't greased the, and moving properly the, 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 <laughs> It can it can literally derail can. the whole process, and I mean I've got it can. I, yeah, and, yeah, and I I I think in Ocala, um, you know, specifically we have such a tight knit group mm -hmm. of people. We know it's too we're, we're we're this big little city, but we know it still is word of mouth. It is word of mouth. It's word of mouth, and also trust. It is trust. Yes. And, and I don't think you always have to have the answer. Um, no. I, I think that's why I did well in my position with the city of Ocala because every, every single thing we were doing was brand new. So mm -hmm. I totally didn't have the answers, but I was willing to ask the questions. You got to find out. And you have to ask mm -hmm. and, and being willing to ask and being smart enough and, and, and quiet at the right times where you're like, I don't have that answer mm -hmm. and just being honest and say, but I will get it for yep. you and that's, and pausing and then going and getting the mm -hmm. answer for the customer. Yeah. And that is, so. uh, that is a big difference too, because as much as, I mean, you know, I've done this for a very, very long yeah. time and you know, you've been doing it what for almost, not quite 10 years yet. Right? No, not yet. Well, but, on a personal level, right. A, yeah. About yeah. that long, but, um, but life professionally, yes. you know, six mm -hmm. and yeah. 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 But, it, and I do think it translates to any industry. Those same values they do. will make you successful mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it is very critical, I think, in ours. It's really hard well, to you know, but, and have a good is, reputation well, and, if you it, don't yeah. have all that and, going on. <laughs> and, and the thing so. about our business, whether it's buying and selling on your mm -hmm. side or me doing the lending side of it, mm -hmm. is every client is different. Yes. And no matter how everyone thinks that well it's just this it's just you're just buying a house it's just it's but not that's not that client yeah. you know the client has 
different things about them that you know somebody else didn't so every time i always think gosh you know what i've been doing this so long i know everything i get somebody <laughs> you get something new <laughs> i get something new and it challenges me yes. and it makes me have to use my brain a little bit instead mm -hmm. of just going the standard you know because sometimes it can get easy, you know, you do it so much, but yeah. then you get that challenge. And I think that to your point of being able to pick up the phone and call the right people, get the answers oh, yeah. that you need, because, and that's what keeps it fresh for me too, for sure. But, but I was kind of asking the question about what you specialize in, because um, I, what I see, mm -hmm. you know, um, with your brokerage is obviously the service, white glove yeah. service and all that. But I also see that you you tend to kind of um, get a lot of luxury homes and you also do some relocation. We do. Um, we do a, a huge amount of relocation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because the, we're successful with it because of the level of communication and attention to yeah. detail. And that is something yeah. I was going to say, because that is not something everyone can do. I mean, it it's challenging. Um, and we do a lot of previewing of properties, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of on-site videos. You know, our cell phones are so powerful these <laughs> yes, days. We yes. can do a lot. Which is nice. And yeah. yes, and we do FaceTime tours yep. and it, when we can. Sometimes if you're in the country. Aren't you doing one today? I'm doing one tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> so, or one of our clients, right? Yes, yes exactly. Yeah, yeah. They were just tell me about it. Yes, and um, we've bought land off of my videos and yep. stuff. Um, and that goes back to trust. I it mean, does. They know, you, it, you know. In giving, communicating, whether sometimes some of it's verbally, some of it is is visually right. in pictures and, and videos and also um, surveys and, mm -hmm. you know, all the information we find out on the clerk of court site with covenants right. and such right. and making sure you give the this factual information mm -hmm. to the customer, but also understanding, you know, everybody views things differently. Mm -hmm. One customer may want the five acre field that's wide open and feels spacious. Mm -hmm. And the other customer beauty to them and what will meet their needs, it needs to have Lots some, of some trees, trees on it right. and they want uh, privacy and they right. don't want to see any neighbors, but they, they are looking for a smaller piece, yeah. but they just don't want to see their neighbors. So they're not going to buy a hundred acre farm, right? but they're looking for a five or seven mm -hmm. acre farm, but they don't, they need that privacy mm -hmm. and really listening to that individual and, and understanding how their, their perspective yeah, and honoring their perspective. Yep. And, um, and yeah. so I, I enjoy that. I enjoy working with folks remotely. Um, and then d during COVID, uh, all of a crazy. sudden we're on zoom, right. it, which actually made it easier. It, it really, I mean, who would have thought people would buy houses sight and see, yeah. you know, I mean, other than a video, you know, but I have zoom conferences all the time with yeah. customers. And so, you know, we have our zoom account yep. and, yep. um, it's it's been it's interesting. A different, it's a different way of selling. It and, is, and it's a different way of still being able to continue having that one-on-one um, -on -one mm -hmm. service and all that. But technology is so inherent a, right now yes. because of because of COVID. It's forced us all mm -hmm. to do things. I mean, my office here never has anyone in it. They've all set up at home now. They have, yes. you know, and that's what they like. Mm -hmm. I still like coming in because I just feel like. It makes me more motivated, but um, it, but it's it's a whole different way of doing business, and it is. And I, and was, I, I think more responsibility actually is. is on us. Oh yeah, because we're not doing the face doing to face. face to face. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so, so they've got to you know they've mm -hmm. got to trust us for sure. But I um but the relocation part of your business, do you go um, specifically after certain companies that you want to say, hey, you know what? We know that you're driving people into the community. You know, honestly, no. It's all word of mouth. It's all word of mouth and reputation based. Okay, and and that's kind of what I figured. Yes. And now we are members of the CEP. Uh huh. Me too. And um, very, have always been active in the community. Mm -hmm. And so I think I have a fairly large sphere of influence. Yep. But, um, you know, it's, it's definitely word of mouth. We do not buy internet leads. Yeah. Um, I don't solicit. Mm -hmm. I just stay in touch with the people I know yep. and um, 
and and I'm just very I'm very grateful and thankful uh, that everyone uh, acknowledges my effort yes. and sees value in that yeah. and uh, well, and refers business. Yeah. So well, you deserve it Thank for sure. You. What do you think about the market we're in right now? Um, you know, I'm not so. <laughs> I keep thinking it's going to slow down. I hear everybody saying it's slowing down. It hasn't slowed down for me. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it is changing. I had for the first time, honestly, in maybe a close to a year and a half, I had first time home buyers. There are folks, uh -huh. and they actually got to do home tours. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of going out and only showing them one or two homes at a time, I was able to do tours for five or six, six homes. Yeah, and day. we actually did that, I think a total, three times we had real tours and then we went to see one house one right. evening. So they really got to go and look and decide what is really, truly best for mm -hmm. them. So was that really one of the first ones you've done in a year and a half? Yeah, to that volume, yes. Wow. Yes, and not that we haven't worked with a bunch oh, yeah, of yeah, first-time yeah. home buyers, but it's been the volume. It's been so. It's um, hard. Been hard for them. It, it's been difficult, and the market inventory has been mm -hmm. low, and the pool of buyers has been great yep. and vast, and, and so, the sellers didn't want to deal with. Yes, and yeah. if you waited because you were trying to pair up um, a tour mm -hmm. and a home comes on the market, well, if your customers are saying, well, on Thursday, it comes on the market on Monday, and they're like, well, on Thursday, we have three hours to go look at four or five mm -hmm. homes. The home that would come on the market on Monday would was be gone. gone. It was gone. So we didn't have the time to even set up the tours anyways. No, no. There wasn't the inventory. No. But we needed to, to go that day. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, like, like that minute. Yeah. yeah. And if a customer, um, if a customer, you know, first starts like that initial run, we might have two or three homes to see maybe, but honestly, I was showing a lot of pending listings mm -hmm. and we were picking up pending listings as they fell out of contract. Ah, okay. So we were being really creative, but I did not have a lot of regular tours. Yeah, yeah. It was very tight inventory. Yeah. And uh, they might see a lot of homes, but unfortunately it was because, you know, they may, we were looking for a longer period of time. We were competing mm -hmm. against a lot of different offers. Are so. you seeing like the houses sitting on the market a little bit longer? Yes, You're we have seller seen some concessions. Of that. Yeah, we're seeing like some seller concessions, which is great it's, for our buyers. It is good. And it, I mean, it, yeah. um, it kind of, you know, even in my market or mm -hmm. my business, you know, yeah. what, the investors did fanny and freddie i mean mm -hmm. they they made it because they saw the inventory was so low they mm -hmm. saw that um you know there were a lot of folks moving into florida yeah but they were doing it as second homes and or they were buying an investment because you know they could right. rent it out and make a lot of money on it right now and um it really hurt the first time home buyers and really not Definitely. even first time home buyers, but just the average, the average buyer, the average buyer really, that needed financing that yes. didn't have cash to put into, mm -hmm. you know, didn't have, you know, couldn't pay all cash. And so they've tightened up, you know, the investors have tightened up a lot now uh, in the sense that, you know what, they've got to open the market back up to the, to the average buyers that, mm -hmm. you know, the, that are going to be making their homes, their primaries and stuff like right. that only because, as short as that inventory got over the last two years that we've never seen anything like that before and who would have thought you know during yeah. a pandemic we would but also even now the inventory is coming back mm -hmm. um but that that pool of buyers that were kind of pushed to the side they have options now they have and they, they've and gotten a little bit powerful because yeah. i i was hearing my associate a little bit ago today talking to one of her clients that literally did not negotiate any seller concessions before the contract mm -hmm. and called her back today and said you know i've thought about this he went into contract he did everything he goes, <laughs> and i i thought about this and i think i should i should have negotiated seller concessions mm -hmm. and she's like well i'm not your agent but you know you're in contract now and he goes yeah i think i'm going to call that agent and um <laughs> And I'm just, and she was telling me about it and she was saying, well, you know, they're probably going to bump the price. He goes, yeah, I'm going to negotiate this. And that's what their mentality is now because, and I've said it a couple of times too, 
every time people see price reduction, mm -hmm. it makes that buyer's psyche just go, hmm, well, now, now what can we do here? What can we do here? <laughs> yeah. and, and I and I and I hope, and this is, you know, I I've, I've said this many, many times, I would much rather have seller concessions and price reductions mm -hmm. because it keeps our market you know more stable and, it does. and that's what I'm hoping yeah but um you know one of the reasons why I do this Melissa is because I'm trying to spotlight our our um, local agents that you know I work with myself mm -hmm. but also just to kind of educate people about you yeah. because um, I do hand select who we do on this because they have we have to be in the same page as far as how we do business too because it's important to me too that i oh, work yeah. with really you know people that that care about their 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 clients but i also want people to know you outside of just real estate you know because and that's been a real benefit for me because it's it's allowing me to um learn about people that I only deal with in business mm -hmm. because we get so caught up in it and we, we, we do. we're, we're very busy that, you know, even socially and I, and one of the things that um, I know you did and that you were part of was the hits. So I don't compete anymore, okay. but I have a horse and I used to work professionally in the, in the equine industry, okay. managing horse farms. And years ago, before I was managing <laughs> uh, farms, I was working on the breeding side in the thoroughbred racing really? industry. Oh so, my gosh! Yeah, that was, was a was while that here? ago. Yes. Okay. It was here in Ocala, and then uh, in Wisconsin. Oh my so, gosh! Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you have your horse. Yeah, I do. I do follow you on Facebook. And yeah. what is his name? So he has an unusual name. It's uh, he's a retired racehorse mm -hmm. so he ran i think 23 times oh roughly and i bought him as a five and a half year old he wasn't a rescue horse <laughs> i paid for him <laughs> so his owner he has a, a really good story and and has been blessed the woman who bred him raised him and was also the trainer at the track oh wow so he was kind of her heart horse mm -hmm. she has a string of racehorses and used to be heavily involved in breeding um, and she's kind of getting out of it. And so when he was done racing, she was going to make sure that he Got went to a good, good home, home and she wasn't going to give him anywhere. <laughs> she Aww. knew what he was worth. Yeah. So, um, so I bought him and I've spent the past two years building a relationship with him and, and a foundation. Um, we're not competing, but I am riding in dressage. And what kind of horse is he? So he's a thoroughbred. He is a thoroughbred. Yeah. That's right. And how big, I mean, he's. He's not that large. He's, he looks, he he looks, looks like, large. He's large in personality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has a large personality, but um, he's 15'3". Uh, okay. uh, so 15 hands, 3 yep. inches. And he's he's actually filled out a lot, so it's possible with muscle. If I measured him, he might be 16 hands now. But um, he, he's rel not considered a large horse okay, in the grand scheme of things. He looks like, yeah. Well, he's Maybe because of you. It's his presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, and um, but uh, I do ride. Have you always had a horse? Mm, almost always. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes years ago I had more than one. Yeah. <laughs> so one, of, one of my girlfriends. Yeah. One of one of my girlfriends used to compete with paint mm -hmm. paint horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, paint painter. Paint. Yeah. Yeah, paint. Um, and it was a big deal. I mean, oh, yes. it, I mean, very expensive, you yeah. know, the costumes, you name it, it was everything. Yeah. So I learned a little bit because, you know, my dad was in the Navy for 30 years. So mm -hmm. we traveled all over and, and we were an all girl family. So there was, yeah. there, this was all new to me, Ocala with horses and all that. Um, I never knew anything. So I've learned a lot about it, but, um, where do you where do you own property that he's on or do you even... i don't so he's in training with with a trainer but um because he is kind of a unique guy and so she mostly gives me instruction on him uh -huh. um and he's at a, a venting farm is that uh, local in, mm -hmm. okay he's in northwest marion county okay. on the corner of 326 and 225 okay. Okay. and uh on a 40 acre farm and I board him because my work is so busy. Yeah. I I do try to block out time and I tend to ride in the, in the early morning. morning. I know. <laughs> because our work is busy yes. from about noon on yep. Yep. into 
yep. the evening. Yeah. Um, and so I'll start my day and I'll check my correspondence and I'll do some work in the office. And then I'm normally out the door around 8, 8.15. I'm head to the barn. And that gives time for him to be brought in from out, being out in the field and he eats yep. his grain and everything. Uh -huh. And then I'm there and we go you for You ride him every day? I don't ride every day, but I ride probably four to five times a week. So you do. So, so I do ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how old is he? He is now seven. So so, so. now that he was, is there training because he was a racehorse and he has to be more he's, domesticated? He's, yeah, well, yeah. In a, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't need That's you That's a to, great way of saying yes, it. Okay. He needs, he is learning um, about life off of the racetrack. Okay. And um, he is... A, a little bit sensitive and kind of an emotional guy <laughs> and so he's learning that you know the the world is Doesn't, isn't as um is, is okay <laughs> he's just not used to certain things and so we're constantly exposing him even riding with other horses because every so often I think he thinks like, does that mean when I see a group of other horses race. that we're going to go back to the racetrack? Okay. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of. Is it a good life for them when they're race horses? Well, I mean, I think it depends who they're with. Okay. But yeah, I mean, they are bred to run right. and, um, and he had the very best of care. Yeah. And so he was, he was loved and he was cared for. And in the person that had him made sure that when he was done racing, that he went into another good situation. Right. right. So, um, and actually, I mean, I love, I love thoroughbreds and yeah. I love, I love racing. So I was I'm going to say, do you go fast on him too? No, <laughs> no, we are not doing that. <laughs> no, okay. this is all about just, Peace. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and channeling that energy. Okay. Well, so, he is beautiful. He's one of those horses that likes to have a conversation. And so we <laughs> are riding in dressage. And that means. And so dressage is a discipline where um, the, the rider and the horse are really truly becoming like one unit. Uh huh. And, um, and it's a it's a training system basically right. okay. uh, up through the levels and um, so we're learning to be harmonious together and uh, and his muscle uh, because of the type of riding that we're doing right. his his muscular structure his whole top line has changed a lot because he's moving differently yeah. where when he was on the racetrack he had muscles specifically to run okay. and so now he's developing muscles to do other things okay. and to carry a rider differently um and so i don't know if we'll ever compete when if in dressage when you compete you have a pattern and you yeah. need to show that you have this partnership right. with the animal and that the animal is is moving correctly through the different gates and commands, and commands. Mm -hmm. um and i don't I competed years ago and I haven't competed for a while. I'm more riding at this point for myself for, and for yeah. my relationship with the animal. Right. And I get a lot of pleasure out of it. And I probably, I, I think I was thinking about it a lot over the past couple of months. I think every horse that I've had for the long term has been a horse similar to Diesel, <laughs> where they are a little bit more sensitive. And, and I. Sensitive, does that mean like he's. He can change what how he feels based upon my breath changing. Really? So he's I can I impact I can influence him very easily sometimes without realizing that I'm influencing him. So he's really? yeah, he's very sensitive to energy levels okay. and they do pick up on your heartbeat and your breathing and everything. Does it make him react mm -hmm. um, badly? It will, it, it yes, if you're, if you're nervous, uh -huh. they, that gets they conveyed to them okay. and they pick it up. And, um, and so, but I share all that to say like, he's my therapy yeah. because I need to be so focused and in tune with him. You can't worry about work. I can't worry about work. So, so cool. and it's great yeah. <laughs> because I need to turn it off yeah. at some point. Otherwise I can't recharge. So so he is my therapy and um, he's a good boy. He's a, he's a very good boy. He's a very um, kind and sweet horse. Mm -hmm. And um, he does have his moments where he's just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> but it's not, um, it, he's, he's not a 
uh, in a negative, yeah. difficult horse yeah. in a dangerous or mean no, way. No. He's well, a sure very sweet horse. Every time I've seen you talk about him or on yeah. Facebook or whatever, it always looks like a little bit of a love affair. Yeah, yeah he's a we're, good guy. we're good. And I think at this point, I'm this person. So. Does Jeremiah, um, does he ride you? No. Years no. ago, he did get on a paint horse that I okay. had. And uh, and yeah, he's not, not that's not for him. Because you, your family is very outdoorsy correct yes and yes and my parents were okay. and and my husband is jeremiah is all about the outdoors our boys are yep. everybody fishes and swims and, and hunts, hunts. and yep. i don't hunt but i fish yeah and uh we hike go, we hike and we paddleboard and we do all, all of the things Everything, and er, yeah so. so that's why i said i live vicariously through you because <laughs> when i see your vacations they always look very amazing Lots of fun, but always outdoorsy stuff. Yeah, yeah. we we don't sit still no. very well, That's except it. when we're working. Right, right. <laughs> so. Now, now the boys are here locally or no? Yes, they are here locally. They're no longer at home. We kind of are empty nesters. So what do they it's do? It's a change. Um, so our youngest is a welder. Okay. And he, at some point, is probably going to have his own fabrication business. Okay. He's a, totally an entrepreneur. Oh, cool. And our eldest uh, just gra finished and graduated from FSU, and he's going to work for Kimley Horn. He's oh. an engineer. Wow. So civil engineering. Totally opposite. They're completely different, <laughs> but they share the same passions, yeah. and uh, we all So the next move is together. grandchildren. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's a whole different that's world. That's a whole different world. Let me tell you, I, I had two children too, and um, yeah. there is nothing that warms my heart more yeah. than those grandkids. And it's true. It is so true. Everything you hear yeah. is so true. We're looking forward to it's, it. It is yeah. fun. I mean, it was so hard to realize that, oh my gosh, I'm old enough to be a grandmother, but then I got past that. You embraced it. And that now- <laughs> When you saw it. Exactly, it was like, okay, yeah. And and, and I ha my daughter has two little ones, so, and they're all girls. I oh, mean, wow. they're just very girly. Yeah. Um, and so they're just fun. I mean, we can do pedicures and manicures oh, wow. and things, and they're five and seven, you know, yeah. and they're spoiled. I mean, they really should spoiled. be. They are, are my- they are they are my therapy and that's yeah. you know and that's what's funny my son has too because my daughter and son um are 10 years apart mm -hmm. so i had my son and then when when he was 10 my you know my daughter was born so his children are 18 and 19. Oh, wow. And my daughter's yeah, so is five and seven. Yeah. So I have a, a whole too so that's that's really fun yeah so so i have yeah it's weird because I have two grandchildren in college and mm -hmm. two that are are young. Not even yeah. Yeah, one's just got into first grade. So that's so awesome. yeah, but um well Melissa, it has been so much fun. Thank getting, you for having um, me. Well thank you for yeah. doing this with me. Um I love working with you. I love working with you too. I wish you so much happiness, success and everything in twenty twenty three. Same too. And um we're we're gonna be you know, we're gonna rock it out. We are. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so thank much. Thank you.